Okay, baik. Selamat pagi, kelas. Good morning. I don't know where are the rest. Are they still coming, or you they have class before this, or or heavy rain on the way, or many water on the way. So. Okay, we have to start now because it's already ten minutes past nine. Okay, good morning again today. This week and the next week will be the topic that I will cover and it is on another method that we are going to use specifically for solving statically indeterminate structures but the method that we are going to use is what we call the force method the force method you have learned slope deflection method and moment distribution method and that method is also used to solve statically indeterminate problems. And in, uh, for the method of solving statically indeterminate problems, or statically indeterminate structures, basically the methods are divided into two categories. The first one is what we call the displacement method. So slope deflections and moment distributions are classified under displacement method so in displacement method and you have also another one is the force method so there are two basically are categorized in the two category force method and displacement method now both of these methods gives you the same result as you want to solve for the forces the unknown forces and also the displacement the only thing different between these two methods is what do you solve first Remember, in analysis, we want to know two things. One is the forces. It can be also internal forces, bending moment, shear force, axial force. The other one is displacement. Analysis involves these two things. So when you want to solve statically indeterminate problem, if the method that you use, you solve for displacement first, then after that, you substitute in the equation for relating displacement to forces, you get forces. That is, you solve displacement first, then forces, you call displacement method. Example is slope deflection method. In slope deflection method, what do you solve first? In slope deflections, you form your moment is equal to 2 E I O L, 2 theta A plus theta B and then you plus, you form equilibrium equations, then you get the equation for theta. You solve for theta. You solve for theta, you get all the theta. So that is displacement. After that, you substitute back into the moment deflection, the slope deflection equation, you get the moment. You get the end moment. You solve for theta first, that is the displacement first. So that is displacement method. So, so you can, you can infer from here, if, if, it's a, if it is a force method, if it is a force method, then you solve for the force first. If it's a force method, then what you solve first is not the displacement, but you solve for the forces. You get the unknown forces. After that, you solve for displacement. So that is force method. And the method of least work that I'm going to cover this week and next week is categorized as force method. So both are used to solve statically indeterminate problems, but the approach is different. You solve for the forces in, in method of least work. And this method of least work is a method which is based on energy. Method based on energy. That you use the energy principle. That's why it is the word work is there, method of least work. It is a kind of energy approach. So, we want to briefly go through again the basic things. What is the basic things difference between solving a statically determinate problem and statically indeterminate problems? Statically determinate problems mean problem that all the forces you can solve using only equilibrium equations. Equilibrium equation is enough. But statically indeterminate, equilibrium equation is not enough 
and you need, you need one extra one, which is the compatibility equation. So that is a basic difference between solving statically determinate and indeterminate, whether you need extra equation or not. And that extra equation is needed because you have more unknown forces than the equilibrium equations. And if you recall, the compatibility equations is related to information that you get from how the structure is supported, how the structures are connected, how the structure is supported. For example, you have this problem here, you have this particular problem here, where you have, this is a simply support, this is a cantilever beam with a prop here, with a prop here, so this is a fixed support, you have four, three reaction forces, this is the roller support, you have one vertical reaction force, so there are four. Equilibrium equation, there are only three. So you cannot solve these, uh, these forces, three here and one here completely. You need one extra equation because this degree of statical indeterminacy is equal to one. So you get the help of compatibility. With this is not enough, you have only three, you need one extra one. So compatibility equation is about how the structure is supported and how the structures deform. So the structure here can deform, here slope zero, slope must be zero, and deflection zero, horizontal deflection zero. So you have delta Bx zero, or delta Ax zero, here, delta Bx, so this is delta By, delta Bx, delta By should be zero, delta Ax should be zero, delta Ay should be zero, and also delta A, theta A should be zero. So any one of these, can be used to form the compatibility equations. And from there, you get one extra equation that you relate to the forces. Then plus equilibrium equation, you solve this. So remember, statically indeterminate, you always need one extra equation other than equilibrium. In slope deflection equations, you use the slope deflection equation, M related to theta. So when, when you have that equation, you can solve it. Okay. Now, when you have statically indeterminate problems, one of the main characters, remember early in the lectures when I discussed with you, the deflection is smaller. Okay. We remember the deflection is smaller, the moment, the maximum moment becomes smaller. But the most, the most important characteristic is redundancy. Redundancy. So, redundancy is uh, one of the most important characteristics that statically indeterminate problem has. So, redundancy means redundant. Redundant means extra. So, statically indeterminate structures has something extra. So, redundancy, remember this is a characteristic of statically indeterminate structures. So, statically determinate structure does not have redundancy. When it has, when it does not have redundancy, so if something failure happen, some of the parts of the support fails, the whole structure will fail, because there's no extra, there's no extra thing to prevent the structure from become unstable or failure. But statically indeterminate, you can remember, even though you have certain part of the structure support fail, then the load can be carried by other extra other extra supports and the structure will not fail completely. So redundancy is the most important characteristic. For example, here, here this, quest, this example here, we have again the cantilever beam with a roller support. So this is a prop cantilever, a very simple statically indeterminate problem. Another one is this truss. I have a three bar truss here pin, 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 and at the end here, there is one load acting here and there. So in this example that we have seen previously, this support is, this support is actually not needed for the structure to be able to resist the load stably. This structure you can remove. But you have, when you put extra here, you have redundancy. So this, this support here becomes redundant. And the corresponding reaction force here is what we call 
the redundant force. The same thing here, this member or this member, either of this member, two is enough to carry this load. If you take away this member, okay, if you take away, okay, if, of course, if you take two away, it's not okay. You can take either any one away. And the structure is still able to carry the load. So, either one of these members, one of these members become redundant because you can take it away, it's extra. So, because it is extra member, so if one of these happen to, to fail or somebody, or it is stolen, then the structure is still able to take the load. The structure is still able to take the load. Okay, so redundancy, remember. And the forces, the forces that I show here, if this member is considered to be a redundant member, then the forces acting in that member is a redundant force. If this is considered as a redundant support, then the corresponding reaction force is called the redundant force. Is redundant force. So this is something that you have learned before, just to refresh you again. This morning is heavy rain, so everything is fresh. Okay, so everything is fresh, so I try to refresh you. Thank you very much. To no response. Okay, so this is something to refresh you. What is statically indeterminate structure? The most important thing that statically indeterminate structure has that statically determinate structure does not have. So, in method of least work, this is introduction. So, I give you some basic idea first before we go into more detail. In method of least work, what we do is first you find how many redundant there are. You find the redundant. So you identify the redundance. Statically, it, it is equal to the degree of statical indeterminacy. If the degree is 1, then you have 1 redundant. If the degree of statical indeterminacy is 2, then you have 2 redundant. So if 3, 4, and then you have 4, and so on. So the method of least work, this is just give you some idea first before we go into very more detail. You identify the redundance, how many there are one, two, or three, then you apply. Then what you do is you consider that redundant, you consider that redundant as a kind of external load. You consider it as a load. This is only analysis. It is actually not a load, but for method of least work, you apply that redundant as a load. You don't know the magnitude, but you apply it as a load, together with the other loading. Example here, you. We identify this as redundant. Then we apply that load BY at point B as a load together with this blue one, which is the actual one. So you consider that load as, you consider the redundant, which we do not know yet as a load, and you act it, and it is applied on the structure together with the real one. Okay. So the blue one together with this thick red one, this is a redundant plus this, you apply them. Then, the next, this is the main step here, which is different from the slope deflection equation, is you form the compatibility. So, in method of least work, we make use of the principle of least work, which is represented by these equations, to give us the compatibility equations. So, this del u, del r i, r is the redundant, so you have to do partial differentiations, del, partial differentiations of u, u, of u, not me. So after so many weeks not meeting, so it becomes like very, the relationship is not very, I would say that not, there's some distance, huh? there's some distance away. So del big u, u is, energy, strain energy. So you partially differentiate this respect to this equal to zero. If you cannot remember this, please email Dr. Niraj. Okay. Del U del R I is equal to zero. By the way, all, we all know Dr. Niraj has already left our school now. He's back to India, so please say hello to him from time to time. 
So del u del r i through email, okay? So this is the equations that we are going to use, and this is based on the principle of least work. Del u del r i equal to zero, and in method of least work, we form this equation. Where does this equation comes from? It comes from the Castigliano's second theorem. This Castigliano's second theorem. Okay. The main thing here is the co it is a compatibility equation. Then from here you solve. So in method of least work, it is a force method. You solve for the force first. So the force that you solve is the redundant force. After that, don't forget to solve other forces. Redundant force is not the only unknown forces. You have other forces. So other forces you solve using equilibrium equations. So these are the main steps involved in method of least work. Identify redundant, so you need to know how to check statical indeterminacy. Then you apply that redundant force that you identify together with the real loading on the structures. Then you form compatibility, which is you make use of Castigliano second theorem and principle of least work. This is strain energy, this is the redundant, equal to zero. If you have two redundant, you have two equations. You have four redundant, you have four equations. You have ten redundants, you have ten equations. Then solve the equation for the redundant, and finally you solve for the other unknown forces using equilibrium equations. So this is the main thing, main idea. Then after that, we are going to go into more detail on the detail part of it. So because this Castigliano second theorem appears here, so, and we need Castigliano second theorem in method of least work, so we need to study, cover Castigliano second theorem first. So Castigliano second theorem, Castigliano second theorem, there is the first theorem and second theorem. We don't use the first theorem, we use the second theorem. Then to determine it is mainly an energy approach to determine deflections. You have, you have learned in the very first, early in the lectures, you have learned what method to solve for deflections. What is that method? Method of virtual work. It is also an energy approach for us to solve deflections. So another approach that you need to know is method using Castigliano's second theorem. It is an energy approach, it is, it is a method for us, it is a theorem that we make use to, to solve for deflections. For example, to find what is the deflection here, what is the slope here. So you can use virtual work methods, which is an energy method, you can also use Castigliano second theorem. Okay, so what we are going to cover in these two weeks, today, Wednesday, Thursday, then next week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday again, is first we are going to look at Castigliano's second theorem because it is, this is needed here. And we see how that is being used to find deflection, then we can compare with the method of virtual work. The second one is after we go through this, then this is the main thing that we want to look at. This is method of least work. And it is another method that we call the force method that we call the force method to solve for statically indeterminate problems. Okay. So this is what we are going to cover. And remember this is, we want to relate to the outcome that of this course. So until now, the previous weeks, you have covered plastic moment. So this is one of the outcome calculate plastic moment, so you are able to calculate plastic moment for continuous beams and frames. Evaluate the effect of loads on structure by means of shear force, bending moment and deflection, so slope deflections. After solving slope deflections, you are able to sketch or draw the shear force, bending moment diagram. And also we have, we have learned virtual work methods to calculate deflections. So this outcome and this outcome has been covered. Plus, outcome number one, you are able to analyze statically indeterminate structures using force 
and displacement methods. So force methods is the topic that we are going to cover this week and next week. Displacement method is a method that you already cover the slope deflection method and the moment distribution method. So that has been covered. So the outcome of this topic this week and next week is at the end of this and next week topic, you should be able to analyze statically indeterminate structures using what method? Using force methods. Okay. Finish. So, the next thing that we are going to look at is Castigliano second theorem. So, Castigliano second theorem is needed in method of least work and it is basically used to form the compatibility equations. So, before we go to Castigliano second theorem, I would like to give you the, also the introductions to Castigliano second theorem, the overall, overall view of that thing. Then we go into more detail by looking at the examples, how you actually solve a problem to determine deflections using the Castigliano second theorem. So when we talk about this Castigliano second theorem, we still talk about statically determinate problems. Every example is statically determinate problem, but it can also be applied to statically indeterminate problems. So the basic, the basic idea that we are going to use in to solve statically uh, to solve for deflections using Castigliano second theorem is represented by this equation here. So, if you want to solve for deflection. Vertical displacement, delta. Remember delta that we use in virtual work? If you want to solve for vertical displacement or horizontal displacement, which is delta, then you have to use these equations. This, is, this comes from Castigliano's second theorem. You differentiate partially strain energy, U, with respect to the force which is applied at the point in the directions that you want to determine. The deflections. If you want to determine deflection at point A in vertical direction, so this P is the force acting at point A in vertical direction. If you want to solve for horizontal displacement at point B, then this P is the force acting at point B in horizontal directions. So if you use this relationship, then you can get the displacement. If you want to find slope or the rotation theta then if you differentiate then you use this equation delta is related to force theta is related to moment okay, it is in virtual work also when you want to find theta you, dif you apply you need moment okay. the same thing when you want to find slope or rotations using method where Castigliano second theorem is you, you differentiate with respect to the moment applied at that point where you want to find the rotations. So this is, these are the basic equations that you use when you want to solve for deflections using Castigliano second theorem. You have to keep this in mind because you don't mix up with the virtual work method. Virtual work method you have Real system, virtual system. Apply unit force or unit moment in the virtual system. Then you use the you use the virtual work equations. Then you solve for the real displacement. In Castigliano second theorem method, you do not have virtual system, real system. You do not have that, but you use these equations. Okay, so that is the main thing. So, now because there is strain energy appear here, you have the strain energy. So, you have to know first what is the equations that represent strain energy because of bending, because of uh, axial deformations. So, what is the equation that we need to know which represents strain energy? Strain energy is something energy which is 
store store in the structures when the structure deform when the structure is being pulled or being pushed you have strain energy store when the structure is being bent you have also strain energy store in the system so we first give some overview first on the strain energy so strain energy is equal to the work done by internal forces strain energy the magnitude of strain energy is actually equal to the work done by internal force and for linearly elastic structures now you know linearly elastic structures these are the type of structures that we consider the material is linearly elastic the displacement is small then work done by internal forces is equal to the work done by external forces this is from conservation of energy this is for linear elastic linearly elastic structures internal work is equal to external work so we can also equal make this strain energy equal to external work for linearly elastic structures so this is something that uh, we need to know and we are going to we are going to the same thing as virtual work method we are going to apply this castellano second theorem to solve for deflection in trusses in beams and also in frames so truss this is a truss problem now truss to find deflections mean you want to find deflections either vertical or horizontal of the joint of the joint for example you want to find displacement of this point in vertical direction displacement of this joint in horizontal direction or displacement of this support point in horizontal direction that is when we talk about displacement or deflection in truss we are looking at the joint we are looking at the joint horizontal displacement or vertical displacement and in truss when the when truss deforms initially is this shape you apply load here it becomes like this so when when it becomes this dotted line then this member this member this member what happened to those member what happened to those member when it deforms those member become tension or compression which means it will become it become when it's tension means what it becomes the longer if the member is in compression means it is shorter so member in the member in truss structures when it deforms the member become longer and shorter and because of that you have strain energy store in the system each member is behaving like a spring become longer or shorter and the strain energy for this kind of axial deformation becoming longer or shorter is given by these equations so strain energy is equal to summation you have to add this strain energy store in this member plus this member plus this member that's why you have the summations and each of this member the strain energy is equal to half multiplied with the force in the member multiplied with the deflections which is the elongation uh, fl over ae is the axial deformation if it is compression then this is shortening if it is extension in the member this become lengthening so this multiply with this you get the strain energy for one member then you calculate for all members you add them up together you get strain energy store in the whole truss that is for trusses okay so half f multiply with f l o a e a is the cross sectional area e is the modulus of elasticity okay you have seen something similar to this in virtual work methods okay now we will also cover beam problems and frame problem in beam the characteristic of beam which is different from truss is that in truss you do not have bending in beams or in frame the member bends because of the loading so when the member bends 
which is initially it is horizontal like this, for example, apply this load, this load, then the, the member bends in this way. So when the member bends in this way, then you have bending moment developed. And this is a bending moment developed. And if you compare this section and these sections, the deformation of this small part here is that you have change in slope. You have a change in slope. And the corresponding strain energy in, a, in beam or in any member which is subjected to bending is given by these equations. And again, you have summations because of the bending moment in different parts might be different, so you have to evaluate the bending moment separately for different parts and you add, you add up all the strain energy together. So you have also summations and the strain energy for this part, for example, this part, this part, this part is given by these equations, which is half. You, you need to do integrations. Bending moment multiplied with m over ei dx. This is actually equal to d theta. This is from uh, triangle materials from mechanics. You know that m divided by ei multiplied with dx is equal to d theta. Okay, so m d theta is the half half m d theta is the work done by these small elements, and you integrate them all, you get the work done or the strain energy stored in these small parts plus this part plus this part plus this part then you get the strain energy for the whole beam so that is bending so again you cannot run away even until the final weeks you cannot run away from bending moment so you have to know again how to evaluate bending moment like what you did in virtual work methods so m is bending moment okay so finally, if I compare, if I combine, now frame, frame is similar to beam, you have bending, plus something which does not exist in beam is axial force. In frame, you have axial force. And because of that axial force, and at the same time, you have bending moment because they are loading, which is vertical, horizontal, and there are member which is inclined, Incline because of that then you have axial force also which does not happen normally in beam so because there's axial force at the compression of tension in Different members of the frame. So the strain energy is a combination of strain energy due to bending plus strain energy due to axial Deformation there are two parts the same thing like what you have seen in virtual work methods. So there are two parts here Combine this and combine this. So, this is strain energy stored in a frame when it is subjected to loading. Okay. So, once we know the strain energy for bending, for example, strain energy for bending, then we differentiate respect to P, this force P, if you want to find horizontal displacement at point at this point here then we differentiate this whole strain energy stored in this frame respect to that force p then you get delta if you want to find theta here then you differentiate partially the strain energy stored in this whole frame with respect to the moment applied there then you get the rotation there okay so you need to know that's why you need to know the strain energy u and because you need to differentiate partially the strain energy respect to P and the strain energy of frame is given by this you need to differentiate this partially so if you differentiate this partially with respect to P what we get is this so this is the equation that actually we have to solve uh, we need to use so delta will be summations of integrations of this term you need to differentiate bending moment in each of different parts here with respect to p then multiply with the bending moment in different parts divided by ei integrate for this part for this part for this part for this part and you get this part plus for frame you have to include this part you differentiate the axial force 
in each of the part with respect to P. With respect to this P, multiply with FL over EA, do it for different parts. That is a summation here, and add this thing together, you get delta. So this is the equation that you use when you want to solve frame deflection problem using Castigliano's second theorem. Okay. If you want to find rotations, so you need to differentiate this with respect to the applied moment here, then you get theta. And the strain energy needs to be differentiated partially with respect to this. And this is the equation that we need to use. Theta is equal to summation again, differentiate bending moment here with respect to the applied moment. So this is bending moment in this member, in this member, in this member, or in this member. And this M with the overhead bar there is the applied moment. The M is bending moment, the M with the bar there is applied moment, then moment EI dx plus this part here. Okay, so the actual relation that we need to use is this. So these are the terms that you need to calculate if you want to find theta. If you want to find, for the case of thrust, if you want to find deflection delta here, this is a basic equation that we use, which comes from Castigliano's second theorem. And this will be the resulting equation that we need to use to calculate delta. So summations, how many members we have? Del F, this is actual force in each of the member, differentiate that respect to P. Then the actual force in the member multiply the length of each member divided by EA and do it for each member, then you add them, add them up together, you get delta. Okay? So, this is the basic idea about use of Castellano's second theorem to find deflections. Now, because you have also covered the virtual work method. So I give you a, a kind of comparison for virtual work methods and Castigliano second theorem. In virtual work method, this is for thrust. And this is deflection because of loading. When you have deflection because of loading. So you have virtual system, virtual system, real system, real system. So in virtual work method, you have virtual system, real system. This is the external virtual work, internal virtual work. And you make external virtual work equal to internal virtual work. You find the forces in virtual system. Then you multiply it with F, L, F is the forces in the real system. L is the length, E is the modulus of elasticity, A is the cross-sectional area. Then this thing is equal to this, you solve for this. But for Castigliano second theorem, you do not have virtual system and real system, you don't have. What you have is only the problem given to us, but you identify redundant. Then you apply the redundant, you re apply redundant on the structures and you differentiate, you differentiate the strain energy respect to the redundant. Uh, you differentiate the strain energy respect, respect to the force. So here, sec Castellano second theorem, we make use of this, there is no real system, virtual system. So we have to differentiate strain energy with respect to the force, which is applied at the point in the direction that we want to find deflections, and this is the relation that we use. So you have to do partial differentiation of the actual force in each of the member respect to the load, and then multiply with F, L, O, E, A. So this part and this part is similar. This part is different. Okay? And remember, there is no real system, virtual system. To find rotations, to find rotations, then we need, we use this equation. This is the applied unit couple in virtual system. This is the bending moment in virtual system. This is a bending moment in real system. This is the slope at the point in the real system. 
So external virtual work, internal virtual work, then you find theta. On the other hand, Castellano second theorem, you don't have real system, virtual system. Remember, don't mix this up. If you are asked to find Castellano second theorem, don't use virtual work method. If you use virtual work method, if you get the answer correct, then I give you virtual mark. Virtual mark means you have to imagine the mark yourself. Okay? So, if you ask to use Castellano second theorem, use Castellano second theorem, or else you get virtual mark. Okay? So, keep that in mind, the difference. In Castellano second theorem, you use this relationship. Theta is equal to, you need to differentiate partially the bending moment with respect to the force, <coughs> then m over ei dx. With respect to, not the force here, this should be the moment. You differentiate partially the moment with respect to the applied moment, multiplied with bending moment, divided by ei, and then integrate for different parts. Okay. So, that covers the introductions. First, introductions to method of least work. And from there you see, Castellano second theorem is used to, to, to form the compatibility equations. Okay. Then we look at Castellano second theorem, the introduction, the basic idea behind where you need strain energy where you need to know the strain energy. Strain energy for axial deformations, which is used in thrust. Strain energy for bending, which is used in beam and frame. And strain energy in frame, which is a combination of strain energy due to bending plus strain energy due to axial deformations. Okay. So after this, what we are going to do is, now we know that you need to use this. This is a basic equation that we need. So, we are going to look at next is how actually we solve this equation. How do we actually calculate all this? so that we can find the deflection delta or we can find the slope theta. Okay. How we actually evaluate this or this to find theta, if you want to find theta in the frame problems, and how, how do we evaluate this, what is the procedures involved, so that we can get this and that give us the delta. Okay. By the way, this one, I think the, uh, this first and this first slide, set of slides and the second slide that I show you is, you can get it from e-learning, just uploaded it, get it from there, the first set and the second set of slides, which covers introductions. How many of you, uh, how many of you, every Every second you access e-learning, how many of you? Every second. Every 60 second, how many of you? Every 60 minutes? Oh, then don't let me say every 60 days. How many, every second? Oh, Facebook. How many? You have problem accessing that? Okay. So you access it not every second, you access it every daily. Oh, daily. Okay. Every daily. Okay, that's good. So get those. Uh, these are on the e learning website for the ES 152, all these four sets of notes. You have class after this? It is raining outside. So you have umbrella? You have umbrellas with you? Okay. 
It's very good because it has been very hot without rain. So now this morning everything fresh. So enjoy the rain after you. Where, you, where do you have your class? Oh, here. No need to go out. Okay. So. So now what I would like to do next, and then just we will continue with this. But we have only about five minutes left. So in Wednesday we look at in more detail the actual procedures involved in applying this Castellano second theorem to solve for deflections. Okay, so let me briefly go through first a little bit more detail about Castellano second theorem. If you can see here, Castellano second theorem, the same thing as virtual work method, it is based on energy. It's an energy approach to solve deflections, to solve for deflections. And uh, this Castigliano is actually the name of a person. It's an, from Italy. It is, the name is Alberto Castigliano in 1873. This is a long time ago. So, 1873, Castigliano already exists. And the theorem is proposed by this person. And um, there is a limitation in Castellano's second theorem. This is the limitations. It can only be applied to structures where the material behaves linearly, linearly elastic. So we have seen this. We have seen this in the slides just now I've shown you. It, it, when you apply it to truss structures, we need strain energy U. And strain energy for linearly elastic structures is equal to external work done. And strain energy mass tor, which is equal to the internal work for the case of structures or truss, which, where the members becoming longer or shorter, is given by this equation. So we have seen this. So this is the strain energy that is stored in a truss. And it is the strain energy is stored there because the member becomes longer or shorter. And for beams, we have seen this also for beams. Strain energy is stored. This is external work done. External work done is equal to internal work done for linearly elastic structures and internal work done for linearly elastic structures is equal to the strain energy store in the system. Then for the case of structures where there is bending involved, so this is the strain energy equations. You need to know, you need to do integrations and you need to evaluate bending moment, square and then EI and integrate. For frame, you combine them too. You combine, so you have this one, which is because of the axial deformation. In frame, you have axial forces plus bending. So this plus this. If you ignore this, if you ignore this, then you get the strain energy is equal to that caused by bending. If you ignore the axial deformations. So, let me stop after I go through this slide. So, Castigliano second theorem. This is the, the definitions of the Castigliano second theorem. For linearly elastic structures, the partial differentiation, the del, the partial differentiation del of what? Of strain energy, which is the big U, you differentiate with respect to a force, the P or you respect to a couple, the M. And the result of that is equal to the displacement. If you differentiate respect to force, you get displacement. If, di if you differentiate the strain energy with respect to couple or moment, you get rotations. In the directions of the force, if the force is vertical, then the result is vertical displacement. It's horizontal, horizontal displacement. If it is slanting at certain angle, you get displacement in that angle. Or, if you want to find rotations, you, different, you differentiate partially with respect to moment. If the moment you apply clockwise, then the rotation is 
you assume clockwise. If you get negative, it means it is anti-clockwise. Okay, so in equation form, in equation form, it is given by these equations. So this is the main, the main thing that, main one of the main points that we have covered in today's lectures. Castigliano second theorem, del U, strain energy, del Pi, force equal to delta I. Or del U, strain energy, respect, with respect to moment, applied moment, not bending moment, is equal to rotations. Strain energy and delta is displacement of points of action of force Pi in the direction of the force. Okay. So, that's all for today that I'd like to cover on this topic method of this work. Okay. So please get hold of that note uh, from the e-learning web page and then when I see you again on Wednesday, please bring them.